Hi guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Kirsty, if you're new here, welcome. I'm gonna do something a little bit different for my channel and I'm gonna do a sit down video. I've not done one of these in quite some time. I have teamed up with Calla Homes North to provide you some interior tips. So as you'll maybe know, I am a first time buyer, which is a very exciting time, very, very exciting. It's a lot of work. A lot of work but it's going to be so rewarding in the end so if you've not already watched my empty house tour you'll be able to find it below but yeah so today i'm teamed up with Calla Homes north to bring to you my interior tips i have now been renovating for a month or so i feel like i've gained some knowledge over the time i've rented places before so i've got some tips over the, the over the few years that i have been moved out to bring to you guys because it is it can be a really stressful time and anything to make it a little bit easier here, it's a win. So before we get into it, I'm going to explain why Kala Homes got in touch. Kala have a development called South Bank, which is in Aberdeen and it is off Muggy Moss Road. It is a fantastic development. They have introduced a new incentive for first time buyers, hence the first time buyer interior tips. You should go and have a look at the show apartment. It's honestly gorgeous. You will walk in there and think, yes. Okay, I'll take one. Kala have introduced first time buyer incentives to give you the opportunity to own your own Kala home as a first time buyer. Does it get any better than that? I don't think so. Is that not just the dream? So yeah, I thought I would share the incentives that they've got to offer at the moment. So the incentives available are on or on select apartments at the moment in the South Bank development. They come ready to move into with contemporary double beds, got a classic sofa, dining table, a series of unique interior design that you could just move in and you are, you're ready to go. And you don't have to worry about, oh no, I haven't got a bed. Oh no, I don't have a sofa because it's gonna be there for you, which is amazing because honestly it's all the extra costs that you don't think of and take this from experience it can be a struggle so those little extras make such a big difference to a first-time buyer i highly recommend going and checking out the development so some of the incentives included for first-time buyers as you get your legal fees covered which is incredible again it's costs that sometimes you don't even think about you don't really know how much it's going to cost you and if that can be even partly covered that is honestly incredible they're offering you a reduced reservation fee of 250 pounds and this is all in selected slots so if you want that you've got to be quick and get the pot that you want deposit contribution they'll throw in your flooring and select apartments are fully furnished t's and c's apply of course but if you go down to the show home or give them a call a sales advisor will be more than happy to answer your questions and give you a bit more information about all that fun stuff we're now going to get into the video so here we go here is my 10 interior design tips for first-time buyers we're going to start with like the planning stage so number one Pinterest. Pinterest will be your best friend when you are planning your home. If you don't know what Pinterest is, where have you been? It is a social media type app where you can browse and search for basically anything. But let's speak in interior design. You could search living room ideas. If you've got a colour scheme in mind, you could be like blue living room search and it'll come up with pages and pages and pages of inspiration layouts designs anything you can think of which really helps you plan what you want your house to look like if you're not very good at envisioning how everything's going to end up pinterest you will find everything on there i have basically planned out my whole house by using pinterest all the color schemes all the styles i'm going for quite a rustic industrial vibe in my home all that all on pinterest if you like modern interiors they've got it they've got photos and you can pin them to boards so you can look back and find them later so you could have pinterest boards for every room and just keep pinning and pinning and pinning things and then you'll be able to look through them all and be like yep yep that's kind of the vibes i'm going for following off from that number two would be to create a mood board following on from pinterest i think the next stage would be to create a mood board take your pinterest pins so that the pictures that you have pinned print them out put them on some paper and into each room if you find clippings from websites if you've already looked online like shops say you've been on John Lewis and you've found a lovely cushion that you want print the image of it off put it on some paper and start looking at how it all fits together making sure the color schemes work the styles the textures and all that are all working together think about your flooring colors put that all onto paper so that you can see how it's gonna look once it's finished you'll be able to see if things don't match you'll be able to see if well actually you know maybe that would be it better in another room well actually maybe i've got too much going on here maybe i need to take it back a bit it's so handy to do it'll keep you on track as well if you don't have a printer that doesn't matter either a handy website that i use is called canva you can create a free account which 
gives you limited options, but the limited options are really good. I create all my thumbnails on Canva for YouTube. I create Pinterest graphics. I've created uni work on Canva before. It's very much a creative design package. You can import your own graphics. Like I said, you find that pillow that you loved in John Lewis. You can upload it to Canva. They've got mood board templates. I'll pop some of my examples in here. So you can upload the images to your mood board template and you can pick and choose and sort all the colors out. Yeah, mood boards. Number three would be to start with a blank canvas. If you are buying a new build, that's great. You've got your blank canvas. That is the best way to go. White walls, so you can just get a clear vision of what it is that you are trying to achieve. For my home, mine was all blue walls and red curtains. And the first thing I did was rip it all out, paint it all white. And then you can start to see the shape of the room more clearly. Rooms look bigger. You're gonna have nice white walls where you can start to envision the house taking shape. I think if you start all white, rather than jumping in, say painting all your walls yellow, which yeah, go for it. You paint your walls yellow. But I think to start with, paint them white, inject yellow in other ways first. So for example, into your cushions, into a throw, into your artwork. Make sure that you like the color first before you paint your whole room in that color. It's easier to change out a couple cushions than it is to paint your whole wall again. I'm gonna be using greens in my living room. So I've bought a green throw, I've got some green cushions, but I know that if I get fed up with that color, I can just put new cushion cover on and change it up and you've got a whole different room. Number four, continuing on with the painting theme. If you are set on a colour, you've had this planned for years, you know the colour that you want in your walls, test them out on canvases first. I picked up a couple canvases from Home Bargains for like two pounds. Instead of painting colours on the walls, I painted them onto the canvases where I can see the colour but I'm not painting on the wall. If you had that lovely rich deep blue that's in at the moment. Painted that on my wall and thought, oh actually, I'm gonna stick to the blank canvas and keep it white. <laughs> Trying to cover that blue again can be a bit of a nightmare. Instead, you pop it on your canvas, put it up to the wall and you can see how it's gonna look. Another good thing with that is you now have a tangible item that you can pick up and it's portable. You could take it to a furniture shop and compare it next to your sofa that you might be choosing or like compare it next to the flooring that you're going for and just making sure that it all fits together, which is a really great tip. I did this myself. I did it when I went to pick out like my soft furnishings. I wanted to make sure that the pillows I was choosing all matched with the colour of the wall that I was going for. Uh, number five, as a first time buyer, generally you're gonna you're gonna have a smaller place, which means probably the rooms are gonna be slightly smaller than that five bed house that, that you're dreaming of one day. I would say don't push all your furniture to the walls. This can actually make your room look smaller. Utilise the space that you've got. Put that coffee table in the middle of the room. Keep your sofas diagonal, things like that. Create some focal points in the room and this will actually help make your room look and feel bigger. If you push everything to the walls, all you get to see is that floor space in the middle and that can make your room look quite boxy and small. So it is best to, to keep it flowing with your furniture propped around and not pushed against the walls. This will also help make your home just feel more put together as well and more interior designed as in if an interior designer had come in to decorate, they would be keeping things off the walls, injecting lots of personality, which you don't get if you push everything against the wall. Number six, don't compromise. For your first home, for your first apartment, it's generally gonna be smaller. As a first time buyer, you don't have all the money in the world. Well, maybe you do, but not all of us are that lucky. But I don't think you have to compromise. If you really want something, it can work. And I'm not saying that if you want a 12 seater dining table in your one bed flat, maybe not, but you could still get a dining table. If you don't want your room to feel too small and you still want a dining table, go for a glass. A glass dining table can fit into somewhere in your room. It's transparent, so your eyes glide through it, which makes it seem like it's almost not there, which doesn't take up too much space. You are not obstructing all of your view. Big wooden dining table in the middle of the room where there's less flow. So yeah, the transparency of the glass, for example, it just creates more space. For me, like I, I like to have somewhere that I can sit down and eat. I could fit a dining table in my living room, but instead I've managed to fit in a breakfast bar in the kitchen, which gives me two seats that I can sit at with a friend and eat a meal, which I think is just perfect. Just because you've got a small home or a smaller home doesn't mean that you've got to miss out on the things that you really want from 
your home a study area maybe you don't have a second bedroom maybe you've only got one bedroom you could put in a dressing table which could work as a place to get ready in the mornings and as a place where you can work which a lot of us are doing at the moment we're all working from home it's a good way to use things for multiple purposes i think that's a great way to save space and you don't have to compromise number seven mix materials this is one of my favorite tips it is so important if you don't want your home to look flat mix your materials mix your colors your textures your prints this will make your home look like it's been interior designed by a professional this is what they do this is a tip that they'll use you want to make sure that if you've got pillows for example you've got different sizes you've got different textures some might be quite smooth a woolen pillow some might be fluffy with like longer fibers things like that just to create depth and focal points in your room mixing your textures curtains your throws your rugs making sure that they all bring something to the room if everything is the same it's gonna look flat and it's not gonna feel homely you want your first home to feel really homely it might be the first time that you're moving out you might be living on your own for the first time you want it to feel as homely as you can and this is a great way to do that number eight is to go bold if you decide that you want to wallpaper a wall i would suggest in a smaller room to go big go bright you want to aim for big prints don't go for tiny little prints as this can actually make your room look smaller you want to go for something vibrant draws your eye to it if it's on one wall this is what you want to do you want to make a focal point of that one wall it might seem deceiving but it actually will make your room feel bigger smaller prints make the room look smaller if you're putting a print on all the walls then go smaller smaller and more minimal number nine large mirrors i think most people know about this one now in case you don't mirrors are a godsend mirrors are exactly what you need when you're trying to make your home feel spacious big mirrors if you put large mirrors on your walls it's gonna reflect the light reflect the room and make your home feel bigger behind me you can see this is kind of mirrored you can see the door that's over there makes the room look bigger because that now looks like it's going back that way which makes the whole space look and feel spacious finally number 10 there's no rush i think this is a really great point to throw in as a first-time buyer you're not made of money don't buy everything at once as you probably noticed i haven't mentioned little trinkety bits and decor and things like that which i don't think has to come immediately. I think wait until you're moved in, pick your furniture, you've picked your walls, you've picked your flooring, you've got a feel for the home. Live in it first and then pick up the extra bits that you need like your little trinket dishes to put your rings on or your ornaments and things like that that if you buy straight away you might not end up needing and then you could have used that money elsewhere. It's all about living below your means, making sure that you actually need it before you buy it. You'll end up buying too much and when you actually go to place it in your home you probably don't actually know where to put it. Live in it first, realise where you actually want things to be and then go out and buy your trinkety bits. And that can go back to your mood board, your Pinterest, get inspiration and create your mood board, making sure it fits in your space and then you're good to go. And yeah, those are my little tips that I have gathered along the way for first time buyers getting their interior right. If you are keen to go and visit Kala's show home down in South Bank, I'd highly recommend it. The sales team are very lovely there. They're more than happy to help you out if you've got any questions the development's a lovely area you're very close loads of local amenities close to the city center food shops nearby within walking distance it's a really great place if you're a first-time buyer these apartments are perfect especially with all the incentives that they've got going at the moment it's worth going along and seeing what they've got to offer i was actually really surprised at how spacious the apartments are so roomy so spacious i was especially shocked at the bedroom in the furnished apartment the way the bedroom is laid out it feels massive which is incredible it's an open plan kitchen lounge area you can have your friends over and you can all be mingling while you're maybe making the drinks or you're making the food you'd even have space for a dining table as well you really can you can have it all <laughs> also going along to the show home a great way to get your own inspiration for your own interior design the show home is gorgeous modern and you've got the the grays the blacks the whites industrial tones and then you've got the, your pops of orange uh, which i love i'm doing that in my house i think you should definitely go along have a view that's my video i hope you guys enjoyed thank you to Kala for working with me on this video let me know if you go along and visit the show apartment and speak to the sales team i would love to know yeah that 
that is all for today guys thank you so much for watching make sure you like subscribe and go give Kala Holmes a follow as well I'll leave links and I will leave Kala's website and the apartments down below so you can go have a browse on the website as well thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one bye